What's good, YouTube? I've got another full poster design walkthrough for you today. I'm gonna to be showing you how I created this digital tears poster. It's got some funky effects in there and some cool types. So let's jump straight into Photoshop and I'm gonna walk you through it. Okay, moving over to Photoshop here, we've got the final poster design. I love this in terms of color. It's got this kind of like contrasting green and red effect. And then the whole idea is the effect of this digital age on emotion. So we've got this kind of like mosaic pixelated teardrop coming down the face and then this kind of like code text along the eyelashes and the same kind of effect along the eyelashes as well. So let me jump into a new canvas and we're gonna walk through these steps one by one so you can learn how to do this yourself. So I'm gonna come up to file on new. Now standard by now, 3840 by 4800 pixels, 300 resolution. Now I'm just gonna hide this bar here and the first step is I'm just gonna paste in this image. So I'm gonna link the original image in the description below, but I found this kind of amazing image and it was perfect composition wise for this poster. So I'm just gonna mess around with the placement now this is obviously all adjustable, we can come back to this if we need to. But the first step I took was using Camera Raw Filter to get this kind of like greenish color tint. So I messed around with the exposure and the contrast to kind of get it exactly where I wanted it. So select the image, come on to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. So I'm just gonna come into the light section here. And the first step is I'm gonna reduce the exposure. Now I want this quite low, then I'm gonna move on to the contrast. And these main six sliders here are gonna give you so many options in terms of what you're looking for. I want enough contrast so that this teardrop is kind of really distinct standing out from the rest of the image. So I'm going to increase that contrast. If I play around with the highlights, we've got this kind of clear white highlight in the drop here. So I'm going to increase that. Maybe to around 40 is good. Then play around with the shadows. I think the shadows are quite good where they are. Maybe just stick it around plus five. And then once again, this white value, I kind of want increased so that there's clear contrast here Get that around 20. And now the blacks, just going to increase them slightly. And there we go. So now another step I'm going to take here is just coming into the color grade section and I'm going to mess around with these color palettes here. Now I want a slight green tint. So I'm going to move between green and blue on the midtones. I say just about here is good. And then the same kind of thing with the shadows and then the highlights, they can stay where they are slightly more over to the red. So there's a little, a little bit of contrast. And there we go. I think that's going to be good for the moment. So I'm just going to hit OK on this. Now you can see that as I hide and reveal this, the amount of detail that we've created just from playing around with these sliders. OK, now that we've added effects to this image, we can move into creating this pixelated eye drop. So I'm going to duplicate this layer that we've just added effects to. And now what I want to do is isolate this teardrop in a selection. So I'm going to come up to select and subject. Now, because it's not a clear subject, it's not going to be perfect like you can see here. So I'm going to need to clear up the mask. So I'm going to select lasso tool. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to paint in sections that have not been included. See here, just creating rough circles around them. Now this selection does not have to be perfect because we're going to be adjusting it. So from here, I'm just going to kind of remove this area that isn't wet from the eye drop. And then everything from about this point forward, I'm going to hold down option so that I can minus from the selection or subtract from the selection. And there we go. Let's make sure you haven't got kind of any strays here. We've got an anomaly up here that I just need to remove. So now that we've got the majority of the eyedrop selected, on this layer we've just created, we're going to hit layer mask. And to create it, we're going to be coming up to filter, pixelate, and we're going to be using mosaic. Now you can see what this does. It creates these colored flat square blocks that shape the whole of the image to give it this pixelated look. Now we're going to go for a cell size around 90 here. Now you can obviously adjust this to your liking. The smaller the number, the more detailed it's going to be. But I was liking the look of 90 on this one. So we're going to be going with this. So I'm just going to select OK. And now what we have to do from here is we need to clean up the mask. So you're going to see as I zoom in, what we want is either a full square or no square at all. So you can see these kind of areas here where it's kind of chopped weirdly. We need to either get rid of them or completely fill in the square associated with it. So because I also want this effect to apply to the eye, I'm going to select this mask. And now I'm just going to get a white brush. I'm going to really roughly just paint over. Now this does not need to be perfect because we are going to adjust it again. But the majority of the subject of the eye, I'm going to just color in here. And now I'm going to make my brush smaller and we can move more onto the eyelashes. Now you can see that because I'm using a brush, it's going to create these kind of awkward, transparent squares that are not going to be completely filled. So that is what we're going to be adjusting here. And we're going to be doing that with a different masking technique. Now don't go over too much here, but you want all of the eye covered. So if anything, take out more than you need. And now from here, you can see it's a really cool effect just from using a simple filter. And now from this point, we're going to fix up the mask. So to do this, I want to select multiple squares at once. And then using that selection, we're going to chop out squares and add some back in so that we do it in proportion. So for example, here, I'm going to get the rectangle tool and I'm going to drag in perfectly from this corner to create a square there. Now I'm just going to extend this so that we have a bigger selection to save us more time. So I'm just going to get it right on the edge of the line here so that we've got two rows of squares. And I'm going to hide this layer command click the transparent icon and now we have a selection here so from this point we can come back onto the mask and we can use our m key to get the marquee up and now i can just simply drag hold shift on the selection and then from this point now that we've got another line of squares mixed in 
We can then press X on our keyboard to make sure the white is our background color re ready to use for fill. So I'm gonna command backspace here. And now we have squares that are in proportion, completely filled or completely unfilled. So for example, at this point, I'm going to move this over by holding shift, drag it over to this line and then drag down, fill it in this gap here. And then I'm going to command backspace and that's gonna remove it. So now what you want to do is you don't want to get rid of the selection. So if you use command D, just use command Z to open it back up again. You can see that once I get rid of this, there's this clear faint line that is obviously the teardrop. So we need this area filled in. So I'm going to fill this area in by just by using this selection, dragging around, move it across to get rid of all of the excess and just keep pressing X to swap between your black and white colors so that you can fill and remove areas. So yeah, on these kind of areas where you're not too sure where the bottom square ends, I'm going to fill it in. And if you see any excess here, just drag this down to the top of it, press X, backspace with your black and white colors. Now you can see that this is quite a time consuming task, so I'm just gonna speed through this for the sake of the video. And there we go, now we've got this masking cleaned up. You can see now that it's clearly strictly in squares, which I feel accentuates the effect more rather than it having these kind of like weird cutouts and diagonals. Now with this pixelation effect created, we're just gonna create a quick drop shadow around the eyelid so that it still looks somewhat realistic using lighting. So I'm just gonna add an extra layer over the eyelid here. Now I'm gonna get the pencil. From the pencil, I just want to hide the mosaic so that we can see this effect. And I'm gonna drag it and create a curve just below the dark area of the eyelid. Now again, this does not need to be perfect. Obviously the more accurate it is, the better it is going to look in terms of realism. So I think that's good for the moment. And now I'm just gonna create a selection around here. That doesn't matter too much. And then make a selection. Now all I'm gonna do is just add to this mask, this top area here, make sure that this is added in. And now I'm gonna invert it just using Command, Shift and I. And now with this, on this new layer, I'm just gonna get a black brush selected and I'm gonna draw in just along this. Now you can't see it too well right now, but you'll notice that once the effect is coming in, it will look a bit better. I'm actually just gonna drag this up slightly. So now as I hide and reveal, you're gonna see that it creates a shadow. You can see it more on the lighter tones here, but these kind of harsh edges, I can just brush out. And there we go, now let's move on to the text. So from this reference, you can see we've got two main bits of typography. We've just got this kind of stretch title and this coded text, which is completely over the eyelid. So now to generate this coded text, you can see it's these kind of like random error codes and just associated words with coding and Java and things like that. I've just used ChatGPT to generate an extensive error code. So now I've used this text just as placement for this design. But let me show you how I've shaped it into this eyelid. Okay, so now because we've got everything in strict squares, we can create an easy selection here. So I'm gonna command click on our mask and you can see now that these squares have been highlighted. Now using this as well, you can see if there's any errors. So you can see at some points, I still have not completely fixed the edges of the square here. So I can just use the marquee tool, you know, remove from the selection here, and I can just fix up any inconsistencies. Now again, I'm not trying to make this perfect, but you can understand obviously if you're creating this effect for yourself, just take some time with the masking, make sure that it's all accurate, but I'm just gonna remove any clear inconsistencies. So now from this point, what we wanna do is we want to turn this into a work path. So use the marquee tool selected, so make sure the M is selected, and you're gonna right click and create make work path. Now from this point, this just becomes a pen outline. So you can simply just use your type tool by pressing T and just type into this shape. So now from this, you can see I've just pasted this code back in and already it's fitting perfectly within this shape. I could just play around with the sizing here to see whether we can fit more lettering in or less. But you can see I'm gonna reduce the leading. I'm gonna put that to three, maybe even two. And all you wanna do is you wanna play around with the formatting of the text. So this is all in the typeface departure which is a really kind of like coded aesthetic type. And then what I've done is on the paragraph tab, I've selected justify on both sides. See, there are some cool effects you can create just from justify left, the same with center. If I set this as center, it kind of follows the track of the eyelid. So there's a lot of things you can do to play around with this, here. but you can also manually just come in, chop some lines in and out, add some more in. You can do what you need to do. But I'm gonna come on character and I'm gonna make this slightly bigger around four, put the leading around four as well. And I'm just happy with this placement for the moment. So now with this shadow layer we've created, I'm gonna make sure that this is above the text. And then I'm gonna shift this around just so that it's in good placement within the eyelid. So from this point, I'm just gonna come onto this layer and just adjust it slightly. And I'm also gonna select mask on this text because you can see this layer here where I haven't cleaned it up properly is now showing through. So I'm just gonna get a black brush and I'm just gonna paint these out. And there we go, just hit escape here. And you can see now that this text is just placed within the iframe and coming down the drop here, but you can see from the reference, I only have it within the eyelashes. So I'm going to add to this mask here, select back on the text mask, and I'm gonna get my marquee tool and I'm going to remove this text. 
Now you can just use the same mask you've just created, just shift it around as we were doing before, fit this within the squares, and there we go. Press escape again to remove this, and there we go, we've got the primary text created here. So now I'm just gonna add in the type over on this side so that I don't add it into this text box. And now I'm going to type in digital tiers and I'm gonna make sure that this is center justified. Now the typeface I've used for this is just Times New Roman, regular, and I'm just gonna reduce this down in size, shift this into the middle again. Now, all I've done is I've added a vertical stretch by holding option and shift and just stretch it like that. Really love the look of this. I think it looks quite gothic. And then from this point, because we've got this kind of like green tinted hue on the background image, I wanted to do the contrasting color, which is gonna be around a red. So I played around with this kind of like somewhat pale red and then shifted it between the orange and red hues till I got the color I wanted and I was quite happy with just around here. So I'm just gonna select this point here and then just select okay. And now I wanted to add a similar mosaic effect on this type. So I'm gonna duplicate it for safe keeps and then convert this to a smart object. I'm then gonna come up to filter, pixelate, mosaic, simply as we did before. And then I'm just gonna reduce this a lot. I want it just quite subtle to almost look like the text is slightly blurred just to fit in with the theme. So I'm gonna say around 10 is good here. Now as I zoom out, it kind of fits in much better with the subject. Then I'm just gonna add in a small text box here. I'm just gonna hide this just so I don't add to that text box. It's so now here, let me put it back on departure, put it around a five. I'm just gonna type in, just make sure that it's all left justified, increase this size a lot more. Then a whole bunch of underscores and then digital tiers. I'm just gonna extend this text box so that it all fits. Change this to one of the darker colors within the image. And now from here, I'm just gonna play around with the size and using the transform tools. Set it maybe around size eight and then just shift it over. Now, just for contrast, I kind of like it just as a really faint line, but just for contrast, I'm going to make the text red and then I'm gonna add in a really small stroke effect just using this black color. So there we go, just outlines it a little bit, makes it a bit more of a detailed asset. And from here, we've got all of the text done so we can just move on to kind of texturing and placement and see if we wanna make any layout adjustments. So I'm just gonna clean up my layers here. I'm gonna remove this rectangle, just name this code, shadow, and now we've got the main title there, which we already know. Make sure that that original title is hidden and then small here. Okay, so now you can see in the original, the scale is slightly bigger. So I'm just gonna shift everything slightly, but because we have a live effects mosaic on here, I'm going to just grab both of these images and I'm gonna duplicate and then combine them as a smart object. Now the reason is when we move these live effects, it's gonna adjust the mosaics, so our masking is gonna get all messed up. So I'm gonna make sure that this is just its own layer. Hide the background ones, then I'm gonna select the rest of the layers, transform tools, and I'm just gonna increase this in size. Now this is all still gonna be centered. I say this scales a little bit better. It's kind of this vertical line down here kind of almost shapes into a grid. And now just to adjust, I can play the justify tools, make sure that they are all still perfectly centered. I'm actually gonna reduce the opacity of this shadow a bit, maybe put it around 60, just so we can get some more code coming in along here. Shimmy this text up a bit, now we can move on to our texture layers. So for this one, I'm gonna be using a texture from Design Syndrome, which is this kind of like PNG paper cut texture. Now I'm gonna scale this up so that we don't have these kind of like weird white edges going on. Just mess around with the placement here, and I'm gonna set this to around 60%. Now I can see now after adding this, you can see that the shadow is really shining through a bit too dark. I'm just gonna keep playing around with that opacity to make sure that this all blends. And there we go, that's a bit better. So now to adjust this, because we can see that everything is becoming very gray, we want to maintain our color. So I'm gonna select this texture layer and I'm gonna use Command L to open levels. So now from here, you can play around with the balance of the midtones, the shadows and the highlights, just to create contrast. So I'm gonna bring the shadows right in and then the midtones will go along with that and then bring in the highlights a little bit. And you can see already now, the texture is layered on very nicely here. So if I was to remove this, just hide it now. The contrast has been improved so much. If I take off levels, very flat, very gray, add levels in, it just brings that contrast back into it. Now I also wanna add in a noise layer. So I'm gonna come down to adjustments and solid color. I'm gonna type in 80, 80, 80. Convert this to a smart object and come up to filter and camera raw filter. Now under effects and under grain, we're gonna set our grain to 100 here, size to about 25 and roughness to 50. Now, once I change the layer mode to overlay, this is gonna be a live noise layer that applies to everything beneath it. So if I hide and reveal this, it's quite subtle at the moment, but it almost sharpens the image and brings out a bit more detail within the color. So now from this point, our poster is effectively done. We just wanna play around with the kind of vibrance because you can see once you add a texture layer, you can lose a little bit of color and saturation. So I'm gonna come down to adjustments and add in a vibrance layer. So I'm gonna increase this vibrance and you can see already this kind of green tint is really showing through a lot more as I increase this. So I'm gonna set this to 30 and increase the saturation by let's say only five as if I reduce it 
I mean, is if I increase it this much, you can see how much impact it has. Maybe increase the vibrance to 40. And there we go. Now we've still maintained all of the color. We've got this text showing through really well and the texture is all overlaid so it looks really complete and comprehensive. And that is our final design. As always, thank you so much for making it until the very end. I really hope I can be useful to you or you learned something today. If you want more content like this, subscribe, hit the bell. I'll see you in the next one.